الرحيم قدري ويسرلي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last week we were on hadith number 16 talking about the shades of anger last week and how there is uh, uh, an outward anger where you're focusing on other people, you intimidate them, uh, you try to harm them by your words or by your actions. Um, for example, verbal abuse, scolding, lecturing, or holding grudge against somebody because eventually it will harm them in one way or another. And sometimes, uh, uh, you know, you want to take revenge from a person. Um, and then, of course, you've got displaced anger on people who are weaker than you. Then we talked about, you know, how people criticize and put blame on others, blaming others. The silent treatment is also an outward anger and, and cussing and calling names. Uh, using sarcastic remarks is also a very refined way of, uh, of an outward anger where you are intimidating others. Now, besides this outward anger, which is usually identified as anger, there is something called an inward anger, where you turn your anger on yourself. And usually people think that this is not anger, this is sabr, or this is controlling or managing anger, which is not correct, because inward anger is like you know, a, a pressure cooker where the steam is building up. And if you do not find uh, the white, right way of uh, getting the steam out of the cooker, what's going to happen? It's going to burst. And therefore, this is exactly what happens when people kind of try and uh, keep the anger inside them. And apparently things seem absolutely fine, but eventually they are going to burst on a very small, silly thing. And this leaves other people totally confused as well as to where they went wrong. So a few examples of inward anger. Now, this particular case is though extreme, uh, doesn't happen too often, but yes, physically harming yourself is a kind of inward anger. Um, then denying anger and, and stuff your feelings, you know, and it is all my fault attitude. This is also a form of in, inward anger. Shutting down your mind and numbing out, uh, how do you do that? Uh, for example, getting high when you're angry, using alcohol, drugs, uh, people numb themselves with eating, overeating as well. These are all signs of inward anger or breaking things, hitting the wall. Um, I've heard a lot of people saying that if you're really angry, just go and punch a pillow. Take your anger out of pillow. This is not really the correct way of channelizing your anger where you are breaking things, you're being destructive, sometimes not on people, uh, but on yourself and sometimes not even yourself, but things, so to say. Um, driving recklessly. What's going to happen eventually? You're going to hurt yourself or someone else. So all these are inward angers. And, and then, of course, never addressing important issues. Uh, you know, uh, there's nothing to talk about attitude where you feel that, you know, you're trying to have an ostrich attitude where you, you're kind of denying the very fact that there is a problem existing. This is also an inward anger and eventually it will come out in a very, very, very ugly form. So besides the shades of anger uh, and, and also anger being one of the major sins, we must also understand that there are very, very detrimental effects of anger on our, on our physical self. Um, I'm not a doctor and medical terminology literally puts me to sleep and I don't know an artery from a gland, I'm that bad. But I have to admit, and you probably will agree with me on this, that there is a, seems to be a direct link between our emotions and our bodies. Uh, just think about it. What happens when you are sad? We cry. What happens when we are nervous? We start sweating. We start shaking. When we are afraid, what do we do? We start running. We start running away. So we see that whenever there is an emotion inside of us, um, it does have an effect on our body. Likewise, what does your body do when you are angry? Our emotions can actually cause actual physical changes. For example, when we are angry, what happens? We feel your shoulder muscles getting all tensed, right? Or, you know, your jaws tightening 
or uh, knots in your stomach. All these are signs of anger. Um, clenching your fist, even if you don't go and hit anybody, just the fact that you're clenching your fist uh, tells you that you're angry. Then agitation and shaking, this is also a sign of anger. Uh, then there are certain uh, very, very serious effects of anger also, uh, serious physical effects of uh, anger, which is uncontrolled. Uh, for example, headaches, digestive problems, insomnia, anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, skin problems, eczema and all. And then of course, heart attack mm -hmm. is also, or stroke can be triggered because of uh, anger. Achha. Now, there is a psychological ang angle of anger as well. Anger basically signals the fact that something or someone has come between you and your desired goal. And this goal may be something as simple as, you know, a child trying to do his homework when the younger sister accidentally spills water on his notebook and his anger rears its head. This is, it could be something as silly as this. And what the experts say is that this can happen extremely, extremely fast as you know, one response to a threat. Um, and it takes one thirtieth of a second, or we can say that it can take one thirtieth of a second from the threat that you feel to your reaction. This is how fast sometimes our anger shoots up. And this is the reason that we find, uh, you know, situations where we are not able to control it and later on we regret it. We just don't get time to think about it. So, of course, it is too late to take anger management classes when you're actually provoked. Um, you must understand yourself beforehand and also know very clearly uh, how you react to various triggers in life uh, before an actual confrontation arises. So what are your triggers? What initiates an anger? What makes you angry? Some people, they hold very, very rigid pattern patterns of thinking, you know, with shoulds and oughts and nots and musts for others. So their anger triggers when things don't go their way. This is the trigger for a lot of us uh, for, for getting angry. Now, there are, of course, few other reasons, and Imam Ghazali has explained them as self, being self conceit or having some form of self-praise, looking for self-praise, that can be a trigger for anger, uh, jest or ridicule. It could be argument, it could be disloyalty, too much greed, greed for excessive uh, wealth, and then you've got name and faith. All these are actually personality flaws. So we understand, what we understand from this is that <clears throat> anger, anger in and of itself is a personality flaw. It is a disease. Uh, it's a spiritual disease, but what triggers anger is also because of a personality flaw. So basically, when you ang manage anger, you ha also have to manage other weaknesses that you've got that triggers anger. Anger does not come alone in isolation. It comes with other certain uh, personality flaws that a person can have that can lead to anger. So as far as anger management in Islam is concerned, it is a treatment of the heart. It is, um, it, it, it is looking into your weaknesses, finding the triggers for your anger. And when you man manage your anger, you're not just managing your anger, you will also along with that manage other personality flaws that you've got. Just managing anger will never ever work. Now, anger isn't always bad. Can, can anger be positive? Of course it is. In fact, it is a very, very effective way to protect your dignity. Anger is something that has been ingrained in us, hardwired in us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So just like a knife or any other dangerous weapon, you should know when and how to use it. Same is the case with anger. It can be very, very beneficial. It could be extremely positive if it is channelized in the right way or if you know, you know how to curtail it and when to express it and how to express it. It's all about that. So 
it is not suggested that controlling anger actually means that you never get angry. Every person gets angry, but the aim is always to teach uh, your goal, you know, to, to, uh, is to reach your goal with others, um, with reliable and more sane methods, inshallah. That's the whole idea of learning how to manage your anger. But to begin with, it is important to bring your anger down to lower levels in order to take, take control of it. So try working in steps and try lowering your anger. So the first step uh, in anger management is to lower it to a, to a level where you have ample time to work on it. Because if it shoots really, really, uh, you know, with, uh, really fast, you don't get time to control it. It gets out of control. So the first step is to lower your uh, very strong reactions of anger where it shoots up like anything and you just don't get a chance to kind of like, you know, uh, curtail it or, or channelize it. That's the first thing. So how to control your anger when you are provoked? Uh, uh, so what is it and, and what is Islamic model of anger management? This is what I'm going to talk, talk inshallah ta'ala from here. This is a, a, a visual model for the description of anger over time, right? Here, uh, we can see a red line. Let me just show you. Look at this red line. This is the red line, okay? Uh, it has two ends, and I'm going to talk about why there are two ends to it, but it starts from here, okay? So um, this is the red line, the red line on the graph, where you see here, uh, in initially, uh, it is fairly, you know, a fairly uh, normal because N1 is your normal self when you're not feeling angry at all, right? And this red line that I've just showed you is for fairly common development of anger. This is commonly how anger would develop. N1 is your normal self where you're not angry at all. Okay. Whereas the left vertical, look at this, left vertical axis with this H over here, it measures the degree of temper. How high is your anger? Okay. And the horizontal axis, T1, T2, T3, T4, the T line, which is the horizontal axis, it measures time in minutes. Okay. So when you see this, it will tell you how high the anger is. And this will tell you after what period of time, uh, what period of time are we talking about? Okay. Now, around T1, the level of emotion is quite normal. It is close to the normality N1 here. This is what I'm talking about. It's like slightly above the normal level. Okay. Uh, now, what is the normality level? N1, the line that you see, this is N1. This is N1, okay? So N1 is when you are feeling totally calm and relaxed and you have no anger, you have no irritation at all. That's N1. T1, you feel, you know, a very slight irritability, but it's not affecting your behavior. Your mind is still open and you're very aware of the big picture perspective. That is T1, here at T1, okay? Achha. But something then happens where at T2, something happens, you know, something that kind of uh, disturbs you and the irritation is a little higher over here, but still not enough to, you know, bother your effective behavior. So yeah, it is higher than here slightly, I would say, but still under control, quite under control. But from here, we see there is a steep increase in the anger, you know, and, and your anger is heightened, is raised drastically. And the temper reaches its peak at T3. This is this is T3. Okay. So it reaches here, T3. And it happens almost rapidly. So let's see the unseen levels between T2 and T2. What actually happens? from the psychological perspective that your anger shoots like anything within a very short period of time from T2 to T3. So what happens is that, you know, somewhere between T2 and T3, 
uh, you are starting to have this, you start ha starting to have these negative responses to people, or it could be to places or things around you. And you're still kind of keeping your anger inside, but you're not, you know, you're not just settled. Your focus is starting to narrow slightly, but you can still think clearly and you can still make good decisions. This is how it starts. But then what happens, then you start to kind of get more irritated and you literally want to yell out at somebody. But you don't act on your feelings, which is very good. Your tone with others might be just a little short or you might try to cover your feelings by just being extra nice. Doesn't it happen when you are know that you're not feeling normal and then when you try and be extra nice, sometimes people can tell, yeah, but you're hiding it. Nevertheless, well done, you're trying to hide it. But then what happens if, if this is not harnessed here or channelized in the right manner, now what happens is you're definitely not having fun and you're mad at yourself, uh, you're mad at others and you are mad at the world in general. And you're still in control of your behavior, but others can surely tell that you're not feeling that great. Then you start thinking about getting away from your situation that is bothering you. You might also tell someone off at this point, but you make an effort to be in control, right? Now, after this, your vision is narrowing further. You're, you're starting to say things to yourself. For example, you're, you know, and what happens is your muscle tension is becoming noticeable to other people. And you can say anything. You could be saying it to yourself and you can be saying it to others. You know, if I could, I would, I would like to really let them have it or, you know, something like, you know, this person is driving me up the wall or you could self-talk or say and say to yourself that this is driving me crazy. I can't stand it anymore. This is the kind of self-talk, inshallah. I'll talk about self-talk further in this, in this session, inshallah. This self-talk is very, very disastrous. Now your anger is so high that you are ready to do something about it. Your thinking is not clear and your plan of action might include revenge, it might include retaliation or just a desire to hurt somebody, right? Now you're literally acting on your anger. Uh, you are telling someone off. You might be yelling. You might be using foul language. You are ruled by your emotions at this level. Your thought process has come to a halt. You're no more thinking straight. And I'm sure we all know what, you know, how it progresses. We've all... Uh, been to this level uh, in our lives, right? And then your anger reaches the peak. And at this moment, you have become extremely dangerous. You have a very tunnel vision and all you can think about is how to make the stress stop. It's a very, very helpless feeling. And this is where you reach T3. And at T3, this is T3. And all the feelings, emotions that I've talked about happened here from here till here. And as I told you, the experts say that this can take one thirtieth of a second. This is how fast it happens. We have just tried to analyze and dissect uh, this uh, rapid shoot from T2 to T3 to understand how it uh, goes up. It can be as fast as one thirtieth of a second, not always, but it, it's just to um, for us to understand that, you know, as to why things get out of control, because it goes up very high. So at T3, anger level, it stays at that extreme level for a moment or some minutes or so. And then after this, uh, at T4, where is T4? This is T4. Anger level is reduced. After T4, it either reduced drastically, like in L2, right? Or it goes down slowly and gradually, like in the case of L1. So some people, when they, the anger shoots up to T3, uh, till T4, there is a small period of time where they remain angry, and then immediately they cool down. And the other people who, again, from T3 to T4, their anger remains. And of course, this can vary from person to person how long um, you carry that anger uh, or, or you're dangerous for other people, sometimes for, for minutes, sometimes for hours, sometimes for days, and sometimes <laughs> your whole life. 
Yeah. And then some people start forgiving others and it is cooling down. And when L1 L1 is when you go slowly down and L2 is when you drastically realize maybe that you have done made a mistake or naturally you have to have a personality to go to cool down immediately after giving the other person uh, the peace of your mind. Anyways, in both cases, uh, the disaster takes place from T3 to T4. You are extremely dangerous and disastrous for, your, for yourself and people around you. So the critical time span to employ anger management is at the outset of anger at what point T2. As soon as possible, we have to apply anger management techniques at T2 because after, after this, things go totally out of your control. And this is the time when you are still kind of keeping your anger inside, but you're not, uh, you're just not settled. But any time is better than no time. Ideally, it should be here. But if not here, then here. If not here, then here. Any place you can even kind of cut your losses and, and you know, uh, hold back the damages. Any point in time would still be better than reaching T3 and remaining here till T4. Now, there are basically two cures. And the first is the cure at the beginning of the tension buildup right? The critical area to address anger management is at the outset of anger at T2, right? When anger level has risen somewhat to N2. Where is N2? The blue line here. This is N2. So it's gone up, right? It's above normality. N1 is normal. N2 is slightly above normal. This is N2. That is one has become angry and is irritated, but still, you know, this person has not lost one's temper completely. This is the best time to kind of uh, work on the cure and work on channelizing it. Anger management has to intervene here as soon as possible. This diagram that I'm showing you reflects a very positive situation in which anger level has not been allowed to rise beyond a modest start at T2. This is where you curb it. This is where you kind of hold it back uh, and, and instead of it has to be stopped completely at N2. How do you stop at N2 is the big question I know. This is a case of a person who's able to remind him or herself at this critical moment, uh, which is T2, of his standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day, that he will be have to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on the day of balance for everything he's just about to do, you know, uh, or whatever he would neglect to do, whatever he says, he'll be answerable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the only thought that can stop you at N2. So if there is anything that can stop you at this level, it is your taqwa. This one very powerful technique can take care of anger completely, inshallah. But for that, you need high levels of taqwa. If someone, if somehow you can remind yourself here at this point that whatever we are just about to do or say will be questioned in the hereafter. Amazing thing, right? Acha. And if this method can be employed, where you at the moment of, uh, you know, at this moment, you're able to kind of stop yourself fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing, you know, displeasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have literally saved yourself. You have literally saved yourself. But it's not easy. It's not easy. And this is what the Quran talks about in the verse uh, in Ali Imran 134, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wal ghais, wal nas, wal If you can make a connection to my talk, I think a couple of weeks back when I talked about this particular ayah, this is the time where this ayah will help you, inshallah ta'ala. Having said that, if some people... For some people, it may not be possible to prevent a strong 
uh, swelling attack of anger at this point. Or maybe uh, generally you're able to do it, but maybe once in your lifetime or a couple of times, you would say, all right, I cannot think, I don't even remember the eye of the Quran. I don't even remember what I'm supposed to do. All I remember, all I want to do is scream my head off or hurt this person. And you know, you are in that mode where you the, your anger is really darting up. What do you do then? Um, uh, for for that, Islam, alhamdulillah, knowing the weakness a man has, Islam gives us three uh, temporary alternatives, which is M1, M2, and M3. Method one, method two, and method three. And this is part of Sunnah, all three. Um, they should implement uh, the three most uh, important Islamic methods of anger management taught to us by no one other than the Messenger Salman. All three are Sunnah ways of managing anger if your taqwa has not been able to harness it. All right. So this diagram reflects a person's anger level as it rises beyond uh, T2 to TB, uh, T2 to T2B, right? T2B is this line, the, the, the blue line on the left, right? Uh, where you... Oh, you might tell someone off, but you make an effort to be in control, right? So you're still away from uh, uh, you're still away from T three, but anger has started to show. Uh, it is apparent. So M one method one at this point in time is what here um, uh, you since you have very little time to process the longer uh, the longer one is inactive and not calling upon Allah, the harder it, is, it will be to stop. So basically, all you need to remember is at this point in time, I am going to seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utter the words of protection. And this is M1. This is the first method of Islamic <coughs> anger management, saying, A'udhu billahi mina shaitan arjim. We've got ahadis supporting this uh, sunnah that when you are angry you immediately if you rem don't remember standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one day and and being answerable for whatever you're just about to do at least at least seek refuge with Allah ask Allah to help you out and protect you from shaitan because anger is surely from shaitan anger is surely from shaitan right now if he needs more input and he probably will this person then should use method two and method three. What is method two? Method two is changing bodily posture. When angry, sit down if standing and lie down if sitting. This is part of sunnah and get closer to the ground. And entry is what you do, wudu, washing the face, arms and uh, hands, etc. Make evolution with water. So M1 is what you immediately do. Nothing is what you can't remember anything. At least get into the practice of remembering to do and this should not be done as a matter of just uttering. It's not jadu mandar. You have to literally seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from Satan. Right? M1 is that. M2 is that you change your body uh, physical position. If standing, you sit. You're sitting, you lie down. And the third thing is that you go and do the This actually works, but the challenge is to remember it at the outset of anger. And this will only come with practice. This will only come with practice. And it's very, very powerful. So these are the three things that one should be doing. Ideally, taqwa in and of itself should be enough to kind of hold you back from even uh, letting your anger progress even a little bit and, and giving you time to channelize it and to find ways of dealing with anger in such a manner that, yes, the message is uh, communicated to the other person, but you do it in a refined way where you are not... Uh, uh, you are uh, not harming anybody. But let's say if your level of taqwa is not that high, then you up immediately apply method one, method two, and method three. Now, one more thing that I would like to uh, share here, a technique is to understand your self-talk. It is a very important tool in managing anger. Now, uh, these are the words. Uh, Self-talk is basically the words and uh, phrases that you use while you are thinking. For example, you know, telling yourself that I'm sure my tailor will never give my clothes uh, on time. 
Uh, he never does that. So this is like self-talk. Before even, uh, you know, getting angry, these self-negative self-talk will kind of facilitate anger really shooting up when the situation arises. Or saying that, you know, my mother-in-law will surely pay a, pay a visit as soon as she comes to know that my sister is dropping by. And then, let's say, if your tailor does give your clothes late because of a genuine reason of your mother-in-law, even if she comes, even though she doesn't know uh, about your sister, bang, you hit the roof. So negative self-talk is something that we have to stop. This is a cure for anger management. Like watch what you say to yourself before the situation arises. What have you been telling yourself? What have you been preparing yourself for? So these self-talk phrases influence your emotions. Even after getting angry, self-talk can play a major role in either intensifying the way you feel or in chilling you out. Uh, for example, there are self-angering metaphors that has an effect of you, on you. Generally, you know, saying that I'm a time bomb ready to explode because of her, or I have a short fuse, what I used last week to know if you have anger issue or not, or I'm a volcano ready to go off, or saying I've reached my breaking point, I can't take it anymore, I'm a pressure cooker ready to blow, I have an uncontrolled temper, mm -hmm. and this is my weakness, I can't do anything mm -hmm. about it, you know? And some people say, yeah. I'd rather be than happy. What do they say? I'd rather be right yeah. than happy. Yeah. Yeah. that are only going to make things uh, more and more ugly and difficult. Then based on, uh, on certain positive self-talk, we can have certain uh, empowerment statements uh, handy to cool ourselves down. 